and welcome to the Keep Northern Iron Beautiful podcast. In this episode, we're going to be looking at some food for thought with uh, Jilly Dugan, who is our Biodiversity Recovery Coordinator. And we're going to be walking through as we're getting into growing season. We thought it would be a nice opportune time for us to talk about some of these uh, new growing tips. And of course, uh, throughout the last lockdown, many of you did take to growing your own food. And we're going to talk a wee bit about that too. And as I was saying earlier, we have Jilly Dugan with us um, uh, from the Keep No Land Beautiful team. Jilly, you're very welcome to the podcast. Thanks very much, David. Delighted to be here. Good to have you. Uh, just want to start off on this. Um, obviously, you're very passionate about people growing their own food and you're very passionate about people kind of taking that ownership. What are Just walk us through, what are the benefits of actually doing that and growing your own food um, uh, for yourself? I think there are a myriad of benefits, David. Um, I, th- I think it gets people out in the fresh air. I think it gives people um, a feeling of um, ownership of, I mean, for for a very long time, we've kind of, I suppose, after the Second World War, we, we've let other people dictate what we eat and how it's grown and where it comes from and all the rest of it. And, and I suppose to a certain extent, lots of us are passengers and when it comes to to our food. So it's, it's just kind of getting a wee bit back or going right back actually to you know you you can do this yourself and you can do it in pots and you can do it in balconies and you don't need acres of ground um and even growing a wee at a wee bit of stuff you know putting putting the seed in the ground um seeing it come up turn into a plant and then you know turn into something that you can eat with um sometimes very little care at all you know plants want to grow despite our best efforts at times so I think it just it gives people um it's kind of taking back the power a wee bit isn't it you know yeah. plus i you know there's the food miles and the carbon footprint and um flavor and freshness and um all of that stuff you know how many times you buy a bag of salad leaves in in the shop or the supermarket and you bring them back and the next day they're they're you open them up in their wee bag of slime and um, never mind what might have been spread on them and so you know it's I think it's brilliant and I know from running that Food for Thought project with KNIB that um, so many people got an awful lot out of it you know especially people who had never attempted to grow anything before. Mm -hmm. And do you think Jilly just um just on that, I mean, you, you, you've been talking about, again, people taking ownership of it and about people being passengers. And you're right. You know, we, you know, how many of us, when we go into a supermarket, just lift what's next to us and, um, and, uh, and that, I mean, do you think that over the past year, when people have had more time to be at home, I mean, I know, although I'll concede not very successfully, um, I did, um, I did try and grow, um, some carrots, um, and, um, but, you know, you're right. I mean, it was a bit of a fun project to try and do. Um, do you think, I mean, how do you think, uh, and you were obviously part of the Food for Fault project, which um, for anyone who's listening and may not be aware of it, this is where Jilly, God lover, uh, was spreading the cheer around uh, Northern Ireland. And whilst everyone else was locked up in her home, she was uh, she was going around the place trying to trying to promote uh, and giving out food, uh, giving out growing kits to, to numerous amount of people. It was a national lottery funded project. Um, and do you think that that will continue? I mean, that that good habit that 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 we're trying to get people back into. Do you think that will continue? I I think it will, David. I think for a lot of people it will. I think you know. I think for some people they'll get back to their really busy lives and stuff. But um, regardless of the whole grown food thing, I think um, the whole pandemic and lockdown and COVID has um, it, it's made people really appreciate appreciate outdoor space and the natural world and and the wildlife around us and maybe it's because we've had more time you know to get outside and walk or you know you hear the birds and you smell the flowers and you notice things you know or maybe you you know maybe it's my age maybe I'm just noticing things more but um but I I think so I know the feedback from the food for thought project we got was that you know it had started people on a journey and intergenerational as well you know it was like grandparents teaching maybe grandchildren and um and and a family thing that everybody could get involved in and enthusiastic about and then you know that you know it's it's that 
I still get that. Like I've been growing, I suppose I've been growing food now for about 15, 16 years. But it's that excitement when you like rummage down and, and get the first new potatoes or the first spear of asparagus or even a handful of salad leaves or something. You know, it just, it does your heart good, you know, and, and it's, it's feeding you as well. You know, I suppose you create a piece of art or something and it's a lovely thing to look at. But um, to be able to, to, to do something that nourishes your body, I think, is, is great. So, Jilly, for those who may not be aware, I mean, there'll be some people listening into this going, oh, flip, you know, what, you know, I'm interested in maybe growing, but I don't know what. So what's in Jilly's greenhouse? What, what's, what, what do you like to grow and what's good to grow in Northern Ireland? Okay, David. Well, um, for starters, there are lots of things you can grow in Northern Ireland. Like people, um, apart from pineapples and melons and stuff like that, you, like, you can grow, we have a temperate climate, so we're really, really lucky. You know, with a lot of rainfall, which um, I know doesn't suit everybody all the time, but it's a great thing for growing crops. Um, I I do have a greenhouse and I do, I have a polytunnel. Um, and at the minute, the polytunnel is full of salad leaves soft herbs like coriander and parsley, chervil, um, herb fennel, wild rocket. Um, I'm ca- increasingly, I'm kind of into low maintenance things. So things like wild rocket, for instance, which is a perennial, which means it, you know, it'll die back in the winter and it just springs to life again in the spring. And it's there and you cut it all year and the, the same thing happens. So um, yeah, I'm trying to make things easier for myself. Um, at this time of year, it's like spring is springing, and, and now is a good time of year to sow seeds. Um, and don't, it's like really important to not panic if you haven't sowed seeds yet, because like this week or last week has been, it's been so cold, you know, really. Um, so there's time enough, you know. People panic; they think, "Oh my God, if I have if I haven't sown the seeds by like February or March, you know, that's a disaster and it's far too late." It's not far too late at all. And actually, there are lots of things that you should, you know, sow a little bit now and then a little bit next month and a little bit the month after. So you have a succession of some stuff growing. I'm thinking of like herbs like coriander and, and that kind of thing. So um, I so what I always say to people too is grow what you like to eat. You know, if you, if you have, if you are horrifically... Um, turned off turnips don't grow turnips do you know what I mean so <laughs> there are um and things like like you know thing grow things that are that are simple and maybe quick you know and and things like uh pea shoots and spring onions and um and not everything has to be a big version of itself for instance you can grow baby carrots and baby beetroots and you know things don't have to be in the ground forever mm-hmm. and a day and are there any tips, Julie, you would give for people who want to do that? So what is the, what's the, you know, because see for me, I'm a terrible uh, messer, right? So I, I you know, the, the, the idea of like, you know, planting something and leaving it there for a few weeks or months would be very difficult for me, for someone like me, which probably explains why, um, why, why, <laughs> why I'm barred from garden centers up and down the, the place. So, so, so what's the, what's the idea? I mean, cause there are people who, you know, who just like messing around with stuff. I mean, what, what would be the, the tips you would give? Okay. The tips I would give is you being an awful messer is probably means that you would be one of those people who thinks they have to water something every day to the point where mm-hmm. you drowned it. Uh, and then it'll the seed will rot and it'll never come up. So, mm-hmm. uh, so what I would say is, you know, don't panic. It's you know if if the seed packet says you can only so between this date and that date, that's you know we're Northern Ireland, so we're further further north than, you know, we haven't got the same climate as Southern England, for instance. So you know, um, if it says so something between. February and May it doesn't mean you can't sow it in June or July either um I think I mean I think it would be worth looking at food for thought there's a food for thought playlist on the the live here love here YouTube channel um which has like 57 different webinars um and tutorials and stuff that 
either done by myself and with the guys from the Conservation Volunteers, which covers everything from seed sowing to pulling on to hardening off to things like watering. Um, also, plants are really resilient. So, like going back to that, you know, people think you have to mind them every day and water them every day. Well, that's the surest way to kill something. So, you know, plants, seeds do want to grow. Um, you know despite our best efforts so really you know put uh, get some compost peat free obviously um and or if you you really can't get peat free the lowest percentage of peat that you can get but uh, you know i think it's acknowledged now with climate change and all the rest of it that you know we need to be not using peat anymore and you can use it, it like recycled containers you know the way every vegetable seems that we buy these days is, um, comes in a plastic thing well, those those are perfect to sow seeds and stuff out in um, and just you know if and if you can't go to the live here love here um, food for thought playlist there's lots of stuff on YouTube as well you like for you know um, and it's a brilliant thing and just like start small also I would say you know don't start um, trying to borrow a tractor off somebody and get it into your front lawn Start small in, you know, pots or containers or, you know, even one raised bed or something like that. Um, and your raised bed should not be any wider than a metre because your arm cannot stretch that far. So I think it's 1.2 metres for adults or a metre for children. Um, and if you have room in your garden, think about putting permanent things in. Uh, like at the minute where... With keeping all around beautiful Nico because we're planting a lot of fruiting orchards and schools and stuff. So, you know, apple trees and plum trees and uh, raspberries and strawberries and blueberries and blackcurrants and blackberries. And do they take much care, Jilly? I mean, do they do, do they take much minding or is that you put them no, in and leave them? In? Absolutely. They they really, really don't. Um, and especially the, you know, most garden centres will, will sell varieties that do well in this climate. So, no, I think that's the point of it, that they're really low maintenance. They create a permanent home and habitat for nature. Um, they encourage biodiversity and they're not, you know, it's not like having raised beds or, you know, mm-hmm. potato beds and stuff like that where you're putting stuff in and taking stuff out. And, you know, it, it does take a wee bit of minding. Actually, once you get them in and get them established, they're there for sure. years. Sure. And uh, in terms of actually, you're talking about there about about uh, work that you're doing with eco schools and um, and and younger people. I mean, how are you finding that? How are you finding, you know, because you were saying there about grandparents teaching grandkids and about obviously these are all about transferable kind of not just skills but just transferable, you know, th- things that are passed on. How, how are you finding that? Uh, brilliant. I'm finding that really, really brilliant. Like we're um, we're working on a, a couple of different types of projects. Um, and we're backing those up with workshops but though you know children have been off school and are they back in school you know there's some schools we've gone in and we create an outdoors learning area um with wee benches made out of logs and nine by two timbers and stuff like that um and there's we barked area and then we plant all the fruit trees and fruit bushes and the kids are just they're so enthusiastic and they're so excited um and we'll do things like, uh, you know, blackcurrant bushes. The leaves of blackcurrant bushes smell like blackcurrant, like ribena. So, and you know, what child doesn't uh, like a blackcurrant drink? So you say, you know, who likes blackcurrant drink? All the hands go up and you go, well, smell this. What do you think? And they're like, oh, wow, can't believe it, you know. Um, and they, um, brilliant. It's just, I mean, even imparting that, you know, getting them outside, getting them excited about stuff, but... Um, if, even for them to know that like blueberries which are always coming from you know the other side of the world or they grow really well in this country so and they love being wet which is great um, and for e- even you know even to be able to look at the different bushes and trees and think well an apple comes from there and a plum comes from there and um, it's just it's just brilliant and you know our project is going to we're going to be there in September at harvest time and we've planted late uh, well autumn fruit and varieties of stuff and we're going to bring back um, actual fruit okay their first year harvest are going to be small so we're going to buy stuff to supplement that and make stuff taste yeah. it and you know smoothies and drink it and 
yeah, I think all of that just helps to connect people to yeah. um, where they live and what they eat, um, yeah. and sparks that interest in you know something that doesn't come out of a takeaway. And also, I mean, you're going back to what you're saying there about you know kind of appreciating where you're growing up and appreciating the land around you because obviously if you're you know, if you're planting stuff and you're seeing stuff grow from the from the place that you're living in, you're going to have a greater appreciation of it. Um, how do you find, in terms of obviously, because you know, when we try to think of you know gardeners, but you, you know, you can you can often think of people with their uh, their allotments and you know, uh, sitting there you know growing tomatoes and things like that. But that isn't really the fair because one of the things, the interesting things I find about your food for thought videos when they were going out on social media on the Live Here Love Here pages was um the amount of i don't know how i say this right but the amount of you know people who don't conform to to the natural idea of what you think like a gardener would be or who would be sitting on allotment a wee bit can you say a wee bit about that definitely and i i think that's why gardening is it's it's a great leveler but it's a great bringing together as well because um it's yeah it's like that crusty old man in the ripped tweed jacket who you know was a gardener working away at the end of the garden and not talking to anybody it's not it's not the thing anymore and and it's not you know it used to be a very middle class trendy thing to do too but it's you know it's all of that but it's everything in the middle as well you know and community groups um increasingly see the value of growing food with um with people of all generations from their community um, and it's not just about growing the food it's about sharing the food as well so you know it's about it's about coming together and and eating and sharing and talking and um even sharing tips and sharing seedlings and um do you know what I mean? If you, because everybody at some time or other will sow too many seeds, and and to be able to, you know, to give those to a neighbour and, and ask them to grow it on. I mean, there was what the food for thought thing. There was one lady who said to me that, um, you know, about she couldn't believe that the joy it would bring to share in a lettuce with somebody, you know, who was grieving for somebody, and you just think. Yeah, you know, right enough. It's not that's you know, it's not like it takes. There's a bit of thought and a bit of love that goes into growing your stuff, if, or it appears that way. You know, even if it it hasn't um, taken and, you all of your time. And it must be, and it must be a bit. Like, I suppose it's a bit like you know, a mindfulness type thing. You know what you're saying there. You know, because you have to really pay attention to what you're doing in the here and now. It really does take you out of your mind and into you know, because you're touching something, you're feeling, you're smelling something. It, it goes back to what you were saying there about. You know about kids the minute you said to them oh here well have a smell of this uh, black currently you know mm -hmm. yeah it, yes there is that mindful it's just it's get, about getting lost in the moment and you know it ha i mean scientifically proven that soil has um i know everybody's like everything has to be sterile and all the rest of it but soil ha there are there are, are more microorganisms in a teaspoon full of soil than there are people on the planet so and a lot and um a, a lot of those microorganisms and bacteria and stuff produce uh, serotonin you know it, it has been scientifically proven that getting your hands or your feet or any part of your body actually just touching soil is really good for you physically and mentally as well so yeah it's like you know, I think I think it'd be wonderful if everybody and every child and you know got a chance to grow some food. Mm -hmm. And Jilly, just in our final a uh, final question for you, I just wonder: is there anything that, in terms of you know, we're we're, we're in the season now? I mean, is there anything that you're particularly looking out for? You know, that you're looking forward to to seeing spring up or sprout up or whatever the if I hopefully I'm using the right terminology there, Jilly, I know you'll keep it right. Is there anything in the next few weeks that you're really looking forward to? What 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 in your greenhouse are you really looking forward to to sprouting up in the next uh, six weeks or so? Okay, well I have I've just started sowing my seeds actually. So I have sowed um the things I love to grow, because these are the things I love to eat. I'm getting them fresh from the garden. Um, the flavour is unsurpassed. So things like sweet corn, um, 
fresh peas and we would tend to grow things like uh, mange too and sugar snap peas so you get more bang for your buck because you're eating the whole pod you know and not just the peas um, tomatoes are homegrown tomatoes are an amazing thing and actually you can get um, if you get bush type tomatoes like tumbling palm or something like that you can grow them in um, hanging baskets and stuff so those are kind of my go-to all the time but I but I think the stuff that we we live off all year are things like all of the herbs and and a variety of salad leaves mm-hmm. okay Jilly your house must be amazing for dinner um uh hopefully when things get a bit normal we can actually uh we can actually get down and uh and sample uh, some of this stuff and we don't we aren't going to be doing we're do, just gonna have to imagine it uh in our in our minds jilly thank you so much for coming along and uh and uh sharing your your thoughts and your your insights because i know this is something that you're very passionate about uh so thank you you're welcome thanks very much david Thank you for listening to the Keep Northern Iron Beautiful podcast. Please make sure you hit the subscribe button so you can be reminded of future episodes.